1970, NASA had plans to employ four very sophisticated spacecraft to study the five outer planets. This plan, which they dubbed a grand tour, was scrapped in favor of the two spacecraft Voyager missions. NASA had no choice but to make this big move in January 1972 due to the high planned expenditures of over $1 billion. The two spacecraft were built to investigate the gas giants more deeply than their predecessors, Pioneers 10 and 11. Although everyone was taken aback by the change in plans, it turned out that this was one of the best decisions NASA had ever taken. Stay tuned to the end to know all about the two spacecraft Voyager missions. On September 5, 1977, NASA's renowned Voyager 1 space probe lifted out from Cape Canaveral Air Force Base with a mission to study and explore the solar system and beyond. It is now the most distant spacecraft from Earth at a distance of around 14.6 billion miles and continues to travel away at approximately 38,000 miles per hour in the direction of the constellation Ophiuchus. Voyager 1 was planned to visit the outer planets including the then planet Pluto because the design of the two spacecraft were based on the earlier Mariners, NASA's administrator James C. Fletcher changed their names from Mariner 11 and Mariner 12 to Voyager on March 7, 1977. The idea was that if the first Voyager mission proved fruitful, the second one might be diverted to Uranus and eventually Neptune through gravity assist operations, as the project's architects originally envisaged in 1974. However, before Voyager 1, Voyager 2 was launched on August 20, 1977, around two weeks before the launch of Voyager 1 on September 5, 1977. Voyagers 1 and 2 were planned to investigate the outer solar system up close by taking advantage of a rare planetary alignment. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune were the targets of Voyager 2. Voyager 2 was planned, like its sister spacecraft, to identify and explore the boundary of our solar system, which is a different trajectory altogether. To capture photographs of the planets and their moons, both spacecraft were outfitted with slow-scan color TV cameras. They also carried many other sensors to collect magnetic, atmospheric, lunar and other data about the planetary systems. Because the two spacecraft had distinct paths, Voyager 1 had to launch first to align perfectly for each target. In contrast, Voyager 1 had to throw quicker to reach Jupiter first. During mission preparations, NASA's Carl Sagan persuaded the crew that a close flyby of Titan, Saturn's giant moon, was essential. Titan has a thick, mostly nitrogen atmosphere, and the atmospheric pressure is 50% higher than Earth's. So that's why it was decided that Voyager 1 would travel to Jupiter and Saturn with Titan and it would be its last interaction with another planet. If Voyager 1 is successful at Titan, Voyager 2 will bypass Titan and go to Uranus, then Neptune. After all the planetary contacts, including a close flyby of Neptune with Voyager 2, NASA called the project the Voyager Interstellar Mission. NASA's emphasis moved to see how far the spacecraft might go and what data they could acquire. Before Voyager 1 could even enter interstellar space, scientists had to figure out what it meant. The scientific community started to establish the position of the border between the Sun's energetic corona and interstellar space at the same time NASA launched the Voyagers. In addition to a radio communication system, computers, three thermoelectric generators and a slew of scientific equipment, each Voyager spacecraft carried a gold-plated audio-visual disc in case alien life found it. Each album includes photographs of everyday life, greetings in 55 languages, whales and the ocean sounds, and music ranging from Mozart to Chuck Berry. It wasn't until 2003 when Voyager 1 turned off its camera that scientists started to wonder whether the spacecraft had reached the point in the solar system when solar winds approach subsonic speeds, known as the termination shock, which occurs immediately before an object reaches interstellar space. This was difficult to establish since the solar wind detector had been inactive since 1990. Ed Stone, the Voyager program's project scientist, gave compelling evidence in late 2004 that Voyager 1 had passed the termination shock and was in the heliosheath, the first layer of the heliosphere that must be traversed to reach interstellar space. 
thereby making history as the first human-made object to go past the heliopause or threshold of our Sun. Voyager 1's progress contributed to the discovery that the helio sheath was not smooth but featured giant bubbles as big as a single astronomical unit, which are assumed to be created by the interaction of solar wind with the interstellar medium. Because it was pushed sideways by interstellar wind, Voyager 1 passed through the zone where the solar wind could travel in 2010. There has been no discovery of solar wind since then, which lends credence to this concept. Voyager 1 reached cosmic purgatory, or the outermost layer of the bubble that surrounds our solar system in 2011, at a distance of around 11 billion miles from Earth. Charged particles from the Sun are less intense, the Sun's magnetic field is more compressed, and high-energy particles leak from the solar system into interstellar space. The interplay between interstellar space and the Sun's energy fields is becoming increasingly visible. Scientists continue to debate whether or not Voyager 1 had crossed interstellar space as the instruments on Voyager 1 had gone silent. One of Voyager 1's equipment was designed to detect plasma waves. The denser the plasma, the greater the frequency of these waves. There had been no plasma for nine years when Voyager 1 sailed through the heliosphere's bubble. This is because they were protected from the plasma, but eventually, in 2012, there was a cooler plasma detection that suggested entering the interstellar medium, indicating entry into interstellar space. The farther Voyager 1 travels into interstellar space, the denser the waves of interstellar plasma seem to get. In 2021, NASA observed unusual signals from Voyager 1's principal sensor, the Plasma Science Experiment, or PSE. The device specifically reported that the plasma density around Voyager 1 had plummeted, while the magnetic field intensity had grown. This was unexpected because it hinted that the PSE was wrong. NASA's engineers and scientists then launched a battery of diagnostic tests to pinpoint the issue's source. They thoroughly examined the instrument's hardware and software. They sent instructions to the spacecraft to check that the PSE was operational. They also discussed the data from Voyager 1's other sensors to determine if there were any hints of more significant issues with the spacecraft. After many weeks of investigation, NASA eventually pinpointed the problem's root, a software fault in the PSE's data processing procedures. NASA suspected the issue was with the spacecraft's Attitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS which maintains Voyager 1's antenna pointing toward Earth. But the answer was unexpected. NASA officials stated in an update the AACS had started sending the telemetry data through an onboard computer known to have stopped working years ago, and the computer corrupted the information. The remainder of the spacecraft seemed to function normally, gathering data as usual. When engineers realized Voyager 1 was using a dead computer, they transmitted a command to the probe, instructing its AACS system to utilize the correct computer to call home. It was a low-risk remedy, but it took time. A radio transmission takes about 22 hours to reach Voyager 1, which was 14.6 billion miles from Earth and was getting further away by the second. The crew was subsequently able to send a sequence of orders to the spacecraft to remedy the issue, and the PSE was back to regular functioning within a few days. The glitch was resolved, but NASA is still investigating what caused it in the first place. Suzanne Dodd, the Voyager project manager, said we're happy to have the telemetry back. We'll perform a full memory readout of the AACS and examine everything it's done. That will assist our attempt to figure out what caused the telemetry problem in the first place. While Voyager 1 suffered from a glitch, Voyager 2 still worked regularly and had no such issues. The scientific instruments on Voyager 2 are comparable to those aboard Voyager 1. Still, they are not identical, and the two spacecraft are in separate parts of the solar system. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If yes, we're sure you would like this next video here. Thanks for watching.